Zero Accounting Software 2023 Bank Feeds Matching Invoice to Deposit. Get ready to become an accountant hero with Zero 2023. Here we are in our custom Zero homepage. Going into the company file we set up in a prior presentation, the Bank Feed file. First, a word from our sponsor. Well, actually, these are just items that we picked from the YouTube Shopping Affiliate Program. But that's actually good for you because these aren't things that were just given to us from some large corporation which we don't even use in exchange for us selling them to you. These are things that we actually researched, purchased, and used ourselves. Bayer Dynamic, not sure if I said that right, but this is the DT770 Pro 250 OHM Studio Reference Closed Back Headphones. I wear headphones basically every day for a large part of the day. They are important to me. Therefore, I've gone through many different kinds of headphones. I've had these for some time and they've worked quite well. They fit over my ears, but I'm still able to put my glasses on under the headphones. The headphones not pinching too tight on the glasses to give me a headache, which is nice. The quality of the padding is good and it has lasted for some time. I've had these for some time now and they haven't gotten all torn up on me or anything like that. I also like that I have a cord when I'm doing my recordings as opposed to a USB centered headphone because that frees up a USB port and I find the USB headphones to be less reliable. They come with an audio jack that looks like this, which is useful for me because that plugs into my audio interface. However, if you want to use the headphones for some other purpose, I believe it's fairly easy to get a converter to other types of audio jacks. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com where we have many different courses. You can purchase one at a time or have a subscription model giving you access to all the courses. Courses which are well organized have other resources like Excel files and PDF files to download and no commercials duplicated some tabs to put those reports in like we've been doing every time right click in the tab up top so we can duplicate it we're going to right click the duplicated tab again and once again duplicate tab and back to the middle accounting drop down we want the balance sheet open tabbing to the right accounting drop down we want the income statement open Let's change that range on the income statement back to 2022. We're going to try to be working in 2022 this time, even though we deviated last time, January to December of 2022. Update the report. Let's go to the first tab and go into our banking information accounting drop down. We connected the bank or uploaded the banking information for the bank account. And we're going to go to the accounting drop down and account transactions. Now, I've added a couple uh, extra transactions here by simply, let's go to the reconcile uh, by uploading f uh, another uh, set of data. So if you wanna do a similar practice, I just made a nice little Excel worksheet here and I, and I uh, put my data input uh, in this format and then uploaded it similar to what we did at the beginning of the practice problem. So we have some data in here. So. I'm going to say don't save. I'm going to go on 10 sometime in October. I made those items. So here they are. All right. So now we're going to imagine a deposit type of situation where we're going to try to connect it to uh, a little bit more complex of an accrual system that we have in our accounting system. So to see that, let's jump on over to our flow chart. And this is a QuickBooks desktop flow chart, but we're just looking at the flow of the forms, which is basically the same for any accounting system. And we're on the revenue cycle, noting that the easiest kind of thing we can do if we're trying to automate everything is to try to wait till the deposit clears the bank on the customer side of things and then just record it with the bank feeds to revenue with uh, at that time with a deposit form but we can only do that if we're using a a counting system or if we're in an industry like uh gig work or something where we're just going to be able to let it come through the bank like a youtube or something like that and record it at that time if we have to bill someone, then we're going to have to have an accrual system in place. So for a law firm, 
if we're a bookkeeping firm, if we're landscapers, typically we have to do the work first and then invoice or bill the client. We call it an invoice because we're invoicing uh, and that's the form terminology within zero. Invoice means that we're charging. You can use them interchangeably in normal conversation, however. So be careful with these terms of bills and invoices. From a zero perspective, the invoice has a more specific meaning than it does in normal everyday language. It means that we're gonna increase the accounts receivable and the other side's basically gonna go to sales generally. Notice that when that happens, nothing happens to the checking account. The sales are being recorded when we charge the client, when we send the invoice, when we send the bill out to the client. And then we're gonna receive the payment and then we could uh, record the deposit. So notice there's kind of three steps here and you can think about, well, how would the bank feeds fit into that system? So normally, if you're doing the full service accounting system, you would invoice the client, you would track the accounts receivable, then you would receive the payment and make the deposit either at that point in time or have an extra step that you would then make out uh, the deposit and then the bank feeds would fit into that in step by matching to the deposit. You would not be recording anything with the bank feeds, but simply helping with the bank reconciliation. However, you can imagine a system where you're like, well, maybe I can match the bank feed deposit to the invoice and allow the system to do this next step, right? So that might work in certain circumstances. So for example, if you send out an invoice and then when someone pays you, you say, just wait till it clears the bank. And then when it clears the bank, I'm gonna to try to tie out what cleared the bank with the bank feeds to the invoice. Now that would only like work if the amount hitting the actual bank statement is gonna be the exact same amount as the invoice, which often would be the case for larger invoices, for example. But if you have a collection agency in the middle, like a PayPal or a Stripe or something like that, that's gonna mess up your system because they're gonna group a credit card company, right? They're gonna group multiple payments together and then deposit uh, it into your account as a lump sum. So you're gonna have to get a workaround to kind of figure that out. But if you have, if, they're, if it's just like an electronic transfer or, and they're gonna have the same amount hit your bank account as what was on the invoice payment by payment, you might be able to connect the payments to the invoice. Now, the reason we have this intermediary point right here of the receive payment in our flow chart is that sometimes, like I say, if you have a credit card involved or if cash is involved, you might then be collecting multiple payments that will actually hit your bank account in a group sum as opposed to individually, which means you might need to put the money into like a clearing account or something and then transfer it to the bank account so that you can connect from the uh, from the bank account to what's in your books and reconcile possibly with the help of the bank feeds. So we'll talk more about that later. Let's look at this first method. We're gonna say, all right, I, I'm, I'm gonna kind of work backwards here. Here's the amount that cleared the bank. Let's imagine that before this happened, before October 21st, we entered in an invoice and then we're just gonna wait till the invoice clears and try to tie this amount to the invoice. So if I was to do that, let's make an invoice. I'm gonna say uh, plus button, we're gonna make an invoice and let's say a customer, let's just say customer number two this time and let's make it October 1st or something uh, of 2022, October 1st, let's say, and tab through this. And then we sold something. I won't add an item, I'll just say we sold something here uh, one for 200 or 510 dollars I think it was <laughs> 510 and we're not going to have any tax applied to it so I'm going to say no tax if tax was applied you can you know the tax would be calculated here and the system would still work so I'm going to say sales tax tax exempt so what's this going to do when I record it it's going to increase accounts receivable by 510 and the other side's going to be going to the uh, sales account, which I'm going to apply here. Let's do that sales, sales account. Okay. And so I'm going to, I'm going to record that. So we'll say, okay, let's approve that. And then, 
complete the description field it wants a description sales approve por favor and it is contact okay so then if i go to the my balance sheet and update the balance sheet now we have in accounts receivable if i go into the accounts receivable we've got the 510 that should be in here so there's the 510 i'm going to go back and then on the revenue side on the income statement updating the income statement i put it to the sales account so if i go into the sales account we ought to once again have that 510. now i'm not going to i'm not dealing with the sales tax or anything but it would be a similar process with the sales tax because the next step we would assume is we collect the payment now normally if it was a full service system what you would be doing then is tracking your contacts right you'd be looking at your at your contacts and seeing if they owe you money and then reminding them that they owe you money you could also track it in the business drop down and invoices and sort your uh, all invoices the ones that are awaiting payment and then when you receive a payment on it then you would record the payment from the invoice at this point in time now note when you record the payment from the invoice if you get one payment per invoice then you can connect it to that individual invoice fairly easily however if you have one payment that's being grouped together due to possibly something like a credit card uh, company or something grouping multiple payments together you might have to collect two of them and deposit them together if that's the case then you're going to have to use more of a full service system most likely because it's going to be easier to do that kind of grouping from here uh, if you also have other deposits that are coming in or other complications like fees or something like that then you might have to create another checking account which is a clearing account so that you can put it into the clearing account and then transfer it from the clearing account into the checking account so that it hits the checking account in the same format as what will be shown on the bank statement that we can reconcile with the use of the bank feeds so i know that gets kind of uh, messy but hopefully that'll make more sense in, as we go so if i hit the drop down here if i go back into my bank accounts i'm going to try to say well what if i can just wait till it clears the bank and then connect it to the invoice right i can say all right what if i go to my reconcile over here find that payment again which was on sometime in october i believe uh october okay i picked up a different one i think i was looking before at this one <laughs> but i did it for this one here's the 510. so notice zero is actually seeing a match here so it's matching it to an invoice it's not matching it to a payment so this is this is using that match system a little bit differently than you might think of usually so remember what we've been doing normally is waiting till something clears the bank and then creating a transaction when it clears the bank normally when you're looking at the match what would what you would be thinking is i already made a deposit on my end i did a full service accounting thing made the deposit and now i'm matching it to what is here uh in in the bank which means this process would not be recording a new transaction in that case but rather helping you with a bank reconciliation in this case we're matching not to the deposit but to an invoice so that means that zero is still going to have to do this second bit over here right so it's still going to record something what's it going to record it's going to record the reduction to the accounts receivable and uh and the deposit into the checking account even though we're using a matching function so again that method you could see it in some it would depend on the accounting system that you're in but you could see a system where that might work again if you're receiving payments that exactly match the amount of the invoice that you're charging and you don't have that grouping kind of problem that, that would be happening so if i say okay let's match that then if i go to my balance sheet and i'm going to say update the balance sheet accounts receivable should have gone back down because they reduced the accounts receivable when we matched so now we've got uh the accounts receivable had a receive payment form 
goes back down. So if I go into the receive payment form was created from uh, that bank fee transaction, there it is. And we could see the detail tying to our actual invoice. So if I go into my invoice, I can go back to the source document of the invoice. The amount due is now zero. Very cool. All right, back and then back. And then we can say the other side, let's go back again, is gonna go into the checking account. So it's gonna go into the checking account. And of course, it deposited that uh, money in the checking account of the 510 somewhere in October, I believe. Let's see, it's getting difficult to locate things here. Receive payment, I believe that's the one. Okay, so so we have a ni nice ability to match there. Now, if I go back and track that internally on the invoice, so let's go back to the first tab and go to the business drop down and look at my invoices. It should have uh, populated this over here. So if I went to the awaiting payments, that one invoice has disappeared because it's now been moved over to the paid item. So the internal tracking looks good. If I go to my contacts and I look at my uh, customers, let's just go to the customers this time. And I look at uh, customer number two, then it has properly recorded the amount here here's the invoice here's the amount that amount that has been paid on the invoice okay so that you might be able to come up with a system that works like that uh in future presentations we'll think about well what if you had a system where you had to have multiple invoices that are being grouped together by a credit card company or uh by cash payments that are being lumped together then you probably won't be able to match the deposit to the invoice but we'll have to do closer to a full service accounting system and the matching that you have within the bank feed will not be recording a new transaction possibly if you already made the, the deposit but rather matching uh to the deposit helping with the bank with the with the bank reconciliations all right so let's go to the, the tab to the right right click and duplicate the tab and just look at our uh, trial balance as of now just to see how how neat it is that it's been being created just as we go we're just making stuff out of the ether uh which is just amazing it's just constructing on itself growing like a like a tree like a orange tree or something i don't know why orange but so here's our balance sheet we have our balance sheet information and it stops down here on our uh, retained earnings. And then we have, of course, the income statement accounts just listed one on top of the other, matching over here to what we have on our balance sheet accounts uh, that have the subtotals. Let's go back so I could see this properly, if I may. So we have over here the debits equal the credits, which is the same as saying assets equal liabilities plus equity. So assets equal the liabilities plus the equity. And then the income statement fits into the equity section and is broken out on an income statement, the performance statement, giving us the detail of the income statement. 7459 uh, is the 7459. Whereas on the trial balance, we have the retained earnings before the breakout of the added current period performance statement, the income statement, and then we just list the income statements down below it. That's why those two systems are the same, debit, credit, assets equal liabilities plus equity, two ways to say double entry accounting system.